<laughs> the first question that we had come in is if somebody is willing to put in 30 minutes per day, how long might it take to learn a new language? Well, how long? It's always a very popular question. And I think that always rely on how disciplined. I would say just in the fitness world as well, it's more about resilience. I know myself as well, I've been ups and down, ups and down with my weights and then it comes with the language as well. So as a student as well, I learn things like Italian if I'm not very accurate. And then I know I will be mixing matching with Spanish, which is my biggest you know, link to Italian. So how long does it take for you to learn a language? It really depends on you. It, that all relies on you because a lot of people try to put their weights on to like, hey, you know, I, I have a teacher, but also you need to embrace yourself in that bubble. I think you need to create that environment for yourself, that, you know, submerged environment to actually get in. 30 minutes, it's more than enough. And I think it's very efficient. I personally do my tasks on the week in a 30 minutes timer. And that's like 30 minutes, five minutes break, because I know I focused it for real on those 30 minutes. But So how long? It depends. It really depends on each person from person, because as a teacher and then learning from the environment and from world itself, we have different um, learning patterns. You know, it's not a, a constant line. It does take you higher in those in different vocabularies, grammar, and things. So not necessarily it's a line process. It's not like a linear process. So it could take you longer for learning certain things and shorter time to learn other things. So you just got to dive into the adventure and experience yourself because it's amazing. I absolutely love learning languages. One of the first lessons you taught me, and this was so kind of freeing to me in a way, is that there's no specific mark where you're technically fluent. Cause I had asked you a similar question, yeah. how long until I become fluent in Portuguese and one, and I'll let you kind of answer this, what fluency actually is. So I'll kind of save that for a, you know, a minute from now, but how there's no end goal or kind of end mark where congrats, you've learned Portuguese. I'm just a little better maybe than I was last month or the month after. And I think a lot of times when people ask that question, mm -hmm. exactly. And I think a lot of times when people ask that question of how long till I learn a language, we also have to consider that in our own native languages, we're 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years in, and we're still learning in a way. So it's not necessarily one mark. So when you remove that timeline, similar to fitness, as you mentioned, it becomes a more fun experience where it's just, hey, can I get a little bit better? But the question that I'm kind of skipping over that I want to go back to is, can you talk a little bit more about what fluency actually is for somebody who feels like they have to know all the vocab and all the conjugations? What does fluency actually look like? I think fluency is a very complex word and uh, constantly misused. I think a lot of people just use fluency to sell, and that's what's mostly my thoughts about it. In the same sense, if you're going to make the, the, the line of thinking, well, if, yeah, just lose weight, you know, mm -hmm. and I think it's just the same line. It's just a sales, like a proper for sales. That's what it is. Um, fluency, it's way more than, than just learning a low bunch of words. I think it, fluency, it lines up with your podcast title, Transformation. That's what it is. I think when you finally realize that you're like, yes, I can do it. I can order my coffee by myself. I understand what that person is saying. And the day by day, you're learning things. And, you know, in your case, oh, I can communicate with my wife and my wife's parents. And I can grab like great connections. And I think that's what fluence comes with it. It comes with all these experiences, all these great things that you unlock it this by yourself. Languages are not the most difficult thing in the world. It's literally a tool. It's just like you taking your car to work. You need your car to get there faster. It's in the same thing. So I think we just have to stop overthinking about the process and then enjoy it the right, you know? So I don't think fluency is a very well-used word. <laughs> a lot of times, a lot of people, especially in Brazil, for instance, oh, come become fluent in English in three months. I'm not quite sure if you can actually pull out three months, you know, maybe perhaps that person is already in the intermediates, you know, but it's like what I told you in your first lesson and then you already mentioned it. Fluency is when you are, for me as a teacher, is when you are able to communicate 
and you don't know what that person said, but you are able to say, hey, I didn't understand. Can you explain me that? And you understand the explanation of what you didn't know. And that's fluency because you have a vast vocabulary to understand the back behind words, behind the scenes. And for me, that's fluency. That doesn't mean you know how to use reflexive with this, you know, and the most complex size of the grammar. No, oh, that makes total sense. Beautifully said. And I'm wondering how does somebody, and I'm sneaking in another one of my own questions here before you get back to the Q&A, how does somebody overcome the fear? Because it's very real for me of feeling like you sound stupid or silly. When, so when I'm attempting to just get a little bit better, obviously in some of our lessons, I stutter or I hesitate to spit something out because in my head, this is going to sound ridiculous. How does somebody kind of get past that? Well, confidence is a key factor for whenever we are learning a new language. Pressing the button like to F off, it is literally one of the most important buttons that we have to do. And perhaps that's one of the biggest reasons Brazil is not a big English speaker country. It's not a big English speaking country because a lot of Brazilians, us in general, culture wise, just like what you resignates, we are very judgmental people. Um, we judge, we're very driven by aesthetics. We're crazy by cosmetics. We're crazy about how our hair looks, if it's accepted by society and how should I behave or what kind of clothing should I be wearing trending am I going to be accepted so because of that a lot of Brazilians are really skeptical no confidence for speaking and they do know how to speak the language they do know how to pull it out they do know how to do it but they're afraid and the confidence factor comes in and then just like you a lot of students are pushed back because they feel like they're failing it. They feel like I'm gonna be judged or I'm gonna come across um, you know, stupid or this didn't click. In the real world, no one cares. No one cares if you're mispronouncing. No one cares if you're, you know, you're saying something that it did not sound like it. Sometimes you just need to go back and pretend you're a teenager singing a foreign song. I'm sure you went back in time and used to sing along the Spanish words that you had no idea what were you singing. <laughs> that was me singing English Spice Girls blah, 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 and I had no idea what I was saying. But I lived my best life and I built that confidence, you know. My confidence was once breaking into pieces and I was very confident growing up as a teenager. Uh, in a factor, professional factor, the beauty factor, I'm 100% skeptical Brazilian cosmetic, okay? So um, in the professional factor, I was, no, well, I speak, okay, English, I'm great. You know, I'm just going to drive the world. And as soon as I got to a certain position in my life that I was been asked to change my accent, that's when my confidence was like, this is real. Nowadays, I regret it. Nowadays, I regret 100% how I allowed myself to hear those comments and absorb it and brought my confidence back regards to languages. I go to Italy. I feel just like, you know, that I speak fluent in Italian, especially after two glasses of wine. Fluent, <laughs> local. You know, I don't even care. I don't even care anymore if I'm saying something wrong. I get my message across. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. And for me, we all need to find that little confidence inside, you know, the, the willpower. Mm -hmm. oh, it's funny how many similarities there are with the things we talk about in language and health and fitness. Because if a client comes to me and says, hey, I'm afraid to do X, Y, and Z in the gym, I will assure mm -hmm. them, hey, nobody actually cares what you're doing in the gym. <laughs> No one somebody, cares. Yeah, nobody cares. And if somebody is afraid to maybe drink a little bit less than their friends or make a healthier food choice, I remind them they might make a little comment, but ultimately they're not going home saying, can you believe what Giselle had for dinner tonight? They don't actually care. It's like, well, did you see her? She used canola oil instead of extra virgin, you know, or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Where ultimately people don't care. So that makes a ton of sense. But I will get back to the actual Q and A instead of working in my own question. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, do most people learn to read and speak it at the same time, or do you recommend kind of separating those reading versus speaking? That is a great question, and no, um, based on experiences, based on of, of all the students that I've had, like teaching English, teaching Portuguese, um, some students have some similar challenges, but. 
most students, they are very unique in their own way. Um, perhaps you will see that some people like to find their comfort zone in reading it. Some other students like to find their comfort zone in grammar. Believe you or not, there wow. are people <laughs> crazy about grammar. I used to have lessons with um, some students that all she wanted, it was, please, let's dive into grammar back and back and forth. But that's what she wanted. And I agree. So she lacked in, for example, she lacked in conversation skills, but she was great in grammar. She could teach grammar better than I could. And like, it was crazy. So no, um, people learn different in different ways. And also that depends on their background, your learning background, um, the way you were taught, like basically your childhood, your life, your education life, that will reflect in who you are nowadays. And it's easier for you to fall into patterns that you were taught your whole life. So our brains are very intelligent and lazy, as you already know that. And they try to go back to what is the fastest way to learn and what consumes less energy. So it is very, it's a very tricky question because it does depend from person to person. Now, do you think, say me, for example, I feel more comfortable reading it and maybe even trying to write it, even if I'm not good at it, compared to speaking it? Do you think it's important for me to kind of double down on the thing that I don't feel comfortable with on the thing that I'm bad at? Or do you think it's better in a way for me to stick to the things I feel a little bit better at? Is there like a right answer there? Yeah. Um, my answer for you is a question. Don't you think it is? Yeah. Don't you think it is best for you to work in something that you still don't have and dominated yeah. yet? <laughs> yeah. And then another thing is it's, I can see clearly that's not a struggle, that you don't struggle socially to communicate in your own language. So you need to ask yourself, why? What is holding me back to speak Portuguese the way I want it? What, what is the X factor that I need to pull in? Because if I can pull in a microphone and I can do a podcast, and if I'm very confident in my own shoes, why cannot be Sam who speak Portuguese confidently or a confident learner, which is the most important thing? So be a confident learner. Ask yourself, what do I need to be or to think about to become a confident learner? The transformation process is inside out. So Makes total sense. Here I am asking you for the easy <laughs> way out. Hey, can I just- Here we go. <laughs> Your brain says yep. over, yes. No, that, that's totally fair. Um, the next question we have for you is how to tackle such a huge goal so it's manageable and realistic, but you still make timely progress. How do you kind of break that up when it feels like this big daunting thing? Absolutely. Um, who is not feeling overwhelmed nowadays? I don't know a single person <laughs> who doesn't feel overwhelmed nowadays. Um, the, the century disease now, it is anxiety. We all suffer of anxiety of some form or some shape. Um, we are some, somehow working from home as well. So you do need to, of course, zoom out and understand what's your goal. What's my goal? Do I want to be able to um, introduce myself in a month? I want to be able to um, go for a trip and be able to communicate and in the airports or short transactions, short phrases. What do I want? Do I want in about six months time, be able to tell a story to my, my wife's grandmother or you know, something that you would like to share and to make these people feel, uh, feel um, you know, appreciate it. One of the biggest things when you're learning a language is that you need to have a purpose. You can't, make, you can't do anything without a purpose. And you need to have a solid purpose. It can't be only for someone or some reason. It is for your own transformation. It's for your own desire and wish. So it is for your freedom, basically. So you just have to be able to see that it's for your own self-freedom. So it's for the freedom of you being able to speak and understand and do things, get things done, travel back and forth, you know, and do the whole thing by yourself. Mm -hmm. And so I can tell you, I'm, I've been in Germany for a month and a half and I still use Google Translate. So it's, it's just, I need it. You know, I need it. They Believe don't it or not, it. we do have a question about speaking German, which I'll get to in a second, but oh, great. I, I do want to point out. Yet again, how many similarities there are, and I know I keep saying this between learning a language or the transformation process, because yeah. 
I always tell my clients, the things we're about to do are hard, whether it's tracking your food, eating a little bit less, not drinking as much. And if we don't have something on the other side of the scale that makes that worth it, a very clear, meaningful goal of how will my life be better when I achieve this goal, unless you can actually taste that and see that all the suffering on the other side of the scale is going to far outweigh it. We're not going to move the needle. So it doesn't be worth it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so to your point, you know, when I look at why am I motivated you know, to try to learn Portuguese, it's to be able to communicate with my wife and my eventual kids when we want a bilingual household and, you know, extended family. And that's much more powerful than just, you know, I want a party trick where I can say, you know, oi, to the bay, you know, I want to have a little bit more than that. So um, you want to be the cool dad that pulls yeah. up in school and speak different languages and say, ciao, filho, you know, <laughs> bye. And then everyone in the school is like, wow, is he from here? You no, know, you, you just want to be that cool kid. And I get it. I get it. It's yep. just the same. Like, we all go through those processes. And perhaps just really quick on that note yeah. is one of the things that a lot of people, um, they really forget about how this family bilingual dynamics is so cool. Don't you think it's amazing how your wife speaks Portuguese and English and, you know, she can just do all the things. And then honestly, this bilingual environment is something that I am aiming myself as well. So who knows, you know, speaking other languages. That saved them a lot of money, believe me. My dad invested a lot of freaking money in, in like English schools. And, you know, I'm the only one who succeeded. <laughs> all, my, all my brothers and sisters still rely on me. So, yeah.